Now we move on to the step number two. The goal of this step is to give an estimate of the expectation where n is drawn uniformly randomly from 1 to all the way to the floor of x. So strictly speaking, I should put a subscript x here to emphasize dependence on x. n is drawn from numbers 1 to for x uniformly randomly. And to this end, we better have a tail bound for this random variable with respect to this probability. Here we're going to use a classical formula from probability theory. Recall the expectation of the absolute value of a random variable can be computed by the integration of the probability of the absolute value of this x greater than y, dy, from 0 to infinity. This is very classical in probability, but in case you are not familiar with it, let me quickly prove it. The proof uses the Fubini's theorem. What we do here is that we, we're going to write this into a double integral dp dy, and we use Fubini's theorem. switch the integrations. This will be dy and then followed by dp. Now what is this part? This part is precisely the absolute value of x. So we got the integration of the absolute value of x against dp, which is precisely the expectation of absolute value of x. So to estimate this, we need to look at a tail bound like this. Okay, now we are interested to know the tail bound for this. But instead, we are going to look at something more general. Recall that here S sub m is a set of all possible values for the tuples here. Now we are looking at the supremum by using a union bound together with the corollary of the Charles connector we proved. Recall that the corollary is this. It precisely gives this tail bound as follows. This will be less than or equal to the cardinality of S sub m. The domain where you choose uh, those coefficients times here is the corollary of Charles conjecture. This is bounded by. I hope it makes sense to you what I mean by union bound. We are treating this supremum as a union because 
the probability of this, this measurable subset, this measurable subset can be viewed as a union of the events indexed by C1 through Cm ranges over Sm. So this, so this is literally just a union of the cardinality of S of m many events. I should emphasize the dependence on x in here. I hope this inequality is not clear to you. Now, recall that we already have an estimate for the cardinality of S of m. We have this bound. So to continue, this will be bounded by times, let me just copy a thing here. This is true for any sigma greater than zero as m goes to infinity. Recall that the implied constant here only depends on epsilon as well as this f, but the implied constant does not depend on sigma. This is what I emphasized at the very, very beginning. The implied constant here is not allowed to depend on sigma. Now we choose sigma to be epsilon squared times divided by 2c. We make this choice of sigma because it's for any sigma greater than 0. Then, if you multiply this guy with this, with the first term in this sum, you will notice that that product will go to zero as m goes to infinity. We can choose m to be greater than a quantity that depends on epsilon and f. Noticing that c here is an absolute constant. We do not have to emphasize its dependence on c. Sufficiently large so that This first product will be less than epsilon. But what about the second product? The second product will become if you only look at the dependence on x. So noticing that here only epsilon and m are involved in variables. So this whole thing will also go to zero as s goes to infinity if you fix m and epsilon. So this quantity will be a little o of 1 as x goes to infinity. With dependence on m and epsilon. So this is a function of three variables, x, m, and epsilon, which will go to zero. We will fix m and epsilon and let x go to infinity. This is an estimate we get for this probability. Now we return to the bound for this. 
with this tail bound, we can now give an estimate for this expectation thanks to this formula. So the expectation of average where this n is drawn uniformly randomly from the integers 1 through the floor of x. First put the absolute value sign inside. And now you apply the formula to turn this into an integration of the tail probability. Mind you, this part, this average, is always bounded at 1. That is because this mu has value negative 1, 0, and 1. And this absolute epsilon is always bounded by 1. When you take the average, it is still bounded by 1. This tells you, you don't have to worry about the range when y is greater than 1. So this is equal to In order to give an estimate for this, we use a common trick in analysis. With the integral like this, the trick is that we're going to split this integral into two parts. Which will allow us to take advantage of this estimate we just derived. We will split it precisely at epsilon. The first part the integration from 0 to epsilon of this probability this can be trivially bounded because this probability is always bounded by 1 and the range is just uh, from 0 to epsilon so this is trivially bounded by 1 times epsilon And the second part, noticing that this is the, when y is at least epsilon, and this probability will decrease when y increases. So this guy will be bounded by this with y replaced by epsilon. which is equal to this probability times 1 minus epsilon. But we already know the estimate for this part, which is epsilon plus little o as x goes to infinity m epsilon. little o of 1. Combining these two, we have this expectation less than or equal to 2 epsilon plus this small term. 